Okay. Uh, I'm, I have a pleasure to greet you, uh, our dear colleagues, our dear participants uh, in our worldwide workshop uh, devoted uh, to the development of the digital SI in the context of fair data. Uh, my name is Ferdor Bulijin. I am deputy director of the All Russian Research Institute for the Metrological Service. It's the Russian NMI. And also I am the uh, member of uh, CIPM. Uh, here I am uh, representing the regional metrology organization uh, COMET, the uh, European uh, Asian uh, metrology, regional metrology organization. Um, our uh, today conference um, is uh, like being our conference is being is carried out in such a format for the first time uh, in different time zones, evolving all the people all over the world. And uh, today we have the fourth day, as I have uh, tell you. And this day is devoted to one of the um, uh, important things in the uh, movement towards the digital SI, the digital calibration certificate. And uh, I will announce the people who will help me to uh, conduct the discussion and the conference, uh, our session uh, now. It's uh, Katsumoto Osaka, it's co-moderator of our session. Uh, he's from uh, NMIG, uh, National Metrology Institute of Japan. Uh, Katsushiro Shirono, uh, also from Japan, uh, from the Japan uh, Metrology Institute. Uh, Duncan Butler, uh, he's from uh, the Australian uh, Agency for Radiology uh, and uh, Daniel uh, Hutchenreuter uh, from uh, PTB Germany. Also uh, with us will be Andrei Pankov, the laboratory head, which uh, work in the certification of the uh, uh, program, uh, program uh, assurance uh, for the metrology. Uh, let me uh, show you our agenda. Well, um, now we will hear uh, the speak. Uh, uh, we, we are now in the session topic three, topic three. And after approximately uh, uh, 50 minutes, uh, we will have a break during which you can switch between the sessions. You can see here are uh, four topics. You can switch between the topics after the break. Uh, you can switch, for instance, to topic one, topic two, or topic four. Uh, after uh, my speech, uh, you, we will hear the speech of Daniel Hutchenreuter. After then, uh, for 10 minutes, Andrew Pankov, but his speech will be a little, a little bit more longer than 10 minutes. And after that, we have approximately 20 minutes of the open discussion. And after the break, our session will repeat. So uh, now I have the pleasure to give the word to Daniel Benjamin. Uh, so I, what is the next slides? Yes. Dear participants of DSI and FAIR Digital Data Workshop, my name is Daniel Hutschenreuter. I'm a member of the expert group that is supporting CIPM at the transformation of DSI into a digital world. Today, it is my pleasure to give you a brief technical introduction to digital calibration certificates in the context of DSI and machine actionable data. Let us start with the fundamental question, what digital calibration certificate means. First, human readable certificates in digital formats like PDF or Word are not sufficient as digital calibration certificates. 
DCCs denote files providing the data from calibration in machine actionable form. The data would be given in a structured format like JSON or XML that can be understood by humans too. In many applications, digitalization comes along with an automation of processes such as in automated manufacturing and measuring. Here, DCCs will contribute to the underlying digital data infrastructure. Our challenge is to make the multiple knowledge from different domains in calibration understandable to machines. This example shows the situation uh, as a text that you can find in any calibration certificate today. The green marked information represents measured quantities, values, units and uncertainties based on fundamental definitions from the SI, WIM and GUM. The CIVM SI digital framework is aiming to define universal digital representation for this data. It would be the anchor for interoperability and reuse of data in all domains of the quality infrastructure that are using DSI. In addition, the blue text is contextual knowledge, such as provenance and quality information, calibration methods and procedures, instruments and calibration classes, locations and relations between all these information. It also needs to be considered for a machine actionable DCC. New kinds of measuring equipment will allow to store calibration data on the device, allowing to use this data to enhance measurement results. Thus, the IPM endorses the DCC for metrological traceability at the point of measurement. In this respect, DCCs and in general digital certificates with measurement data are interlacing with DSI. The CIPM task group and expert group on the digital SI sees the importance to develop harmonized data services and tools for a SI digital framework that meets the needs of the organizations in the international quality infrastructure. These nine potential topics are more detailed ideas about an interconnection of DCCs with DSI in fair digital data. Number one considers DCCs building upon common data formats for quantities, values, SI units, and uncertainties. Number two is about DCCs obtaining information on the qualification through a digital link with a fair database of calibration measurement capability entries. Number three considers structured knowledge on calibration in the form of taxonomies controlled vocabularies and ontologies. Number four is about services supporting the usage of data in DCCs and users of DCCs, for example, through software tools that help to read data or QR codes on instruments that help to access the data of calibration. Number five considers the impact from and requirements for reference fair metadata in a DCC. Number six considers to assemble a metrological traceability chain from a DCC back to this I definition and fundamental constants. Number seven is about changes of instruments and instrument software motivated by DCCs, also considering digital twins of measuring instruments. Number eight considers the infrastructure that is needed to support the integrity of digital data, like electronic signatures and persistent storage. And finally, number nine is about relevant work ongoing in international, regional and national organizations, considering potential joint aims. Thank you for listening. And I hope that this introduction gave you a basic understanding of DCCs. Now I wish all of you an inspiring discussion in this breakout session, looking forward to your valuable thoughts and ideas. With this, I like to end. Thank you very much. Dear ladies and gentlemen, this presentation will tell you about the specifics uh, of calibration in Russia, uh, processes related to the digitization of metallurgical services in our country, uh, how a service as calibration will be carried out in the digital future about the digital calibration certificate and the requirements for this structure. Dear colleagues, 
the title of my presentation, requirements for the structure and the format of digital uh, certificate of collaborations, the short is DCC. My name is Andrei Pankov, and I will tell you of this presentation. Uh, the presentation will, uh, will explain the basics of the DCC um, principles. Separately, I would like to express my good aid to colleagues from PTB Germany who were, point, uh, who were pioneered in this area and create the basis for the implementation of DCC in other countries. Uh, in this slide, you can see the uh, features of collaboration of measurement instruments in our country, in my country. Uh, only three characteristics. The first of one is voluntariliance, the second, traceability, and the third, uh, recognition of collaboration results during verification. Um, uh, you may ask uh, why there are so few um, requirements. This is due to the fact that the collaboration in Russia is not mandatory. Only verification of measurement instruments in the field of state of regulation is mandatory. And the second slide shows um, in, in the second slide shows the quantity statistic or which characterizes the system of measurement uh, uniformity, uniformity in Russia. Uh, and one of the lines this one this is the annual number of verifications and calibrations in russia it's about 100 million according to the official data of gis arshin information system more than 13 million verifications are carried out in the russia anomaly it is clear what the number of calibration is much higher uh, the information on the number of calibrations is, is uh, approximately. Since the procedure is voluntary, there are no official statistics on it, and we can estimate is indirectly. Due to the fact the calibration is voluntary, there are different systems and situations in which we can uh, be carried out. Uh, the first of them is the national accreditation system. The second, uh, the Russian, the state system. Uh, the second, the Russian calibration system, uh, which situated in Vnims. And uh, the last of them, at uh, CIPM MRA, uh, the framework through the which national intelligence institutes demonstrate the international um, equivalence of their measurement standards and the calibration and measurement certificates they serve. Uh, who uh, regulates the calibration uh, of measurement instruments in Russia? There are two ministers. The Minister of Eco Economic and Development uh, plus uh, Federal Service of Accreditation of Russian Federation. And the second ministry is the Ministry of Industry and Trade of the Russian Federation and the uh, Rostandard. Which of them have their own information systems, information systems and databases? database of Russian accreditation and uh, the Federal Financial Fund of Assurance of Infirmity of Measurement, named Arshin. And uh, calibration, uh, the data of uh, calibration, uh, may storage in all these systems, and first and the second. In the uh, in future, it is possible to collect information of uh, calibration only in one of this system, maybe it will be a um, meteorological cloud. cloud. This slide is reference. Uh, the use of digital collaboration certificates is fully cons uh, consistent with the digital economic development strategy declared by our leader, our president Putin. At right side, you can see the Mm, decree of presidents, uh, order of government, uh, and, another, uh, and, and another documents, uh, which um, according with digital economy. And the right side 
you can see the uh, documents with uh, digital uh, about digital metrology this federal law 102 and uh, the order of the government of the russian federation um, Uh, an approval of the strategy for insurance in the uniformity of measurement in Russia Federation until 2025. All these uh, documents provide the digitization in our country and the DCC, it's cool. <laughs> uh, next. Now we go to the DCC and about DCC. The next slide. Consider the benefits of using the, uh, uh, consider the benefits of using DCC. Uh, some of these advantages are characterized to any digital documents, not only for DCC. The first one is storage, authentication, protection, uniformity, availability. Uh, no, for example, storage provides easy storage software loading and digital processing of results. Uh, Authorization, uh, the digital signature of certificate of, uh, of certification authority gives legal uh, signification to document. Protection, a cryptographic um, safeguard, guaranteed integrity and reliability. Uniformity, uniform form and uniformity of interpretation of creation results. Uh, availability, uh, it is possible to gain access to the document from anywhere using the digital uh, means of communication. In addition, this is the implementation technology is public, uh, publi uh, publi publicly and available. Uh, there you can see the regional and international standards and documents. Um, which have requirements for the implementation of DCC. Basically, basic international documents are presented here, uh, but uh, we must also take into according original uh, Russian requirements. Uh, the international documents, um, the international system of units, first of one, uh, international vocabulary of metrology, WIM, a guide for expression of uncertainty in measurement, JUM, GUM. <laughs> reference book of found uh, fundamental physical constant so data and uh, standard um, isoec uh, 17025 general requirements for uh, for complement uh, for competence of testing and calibration laboratories and about uh, region standards of our country of russia is federal law 102 uh, that's an order of Ministry of Economic and Development, 70 SEM, it means accreditation, procedure of accreditation, and approval of accreditation criteria. The three documents. You can see this slide, all of them. This original, this um, international standards. Uh, now, some words about digital signature and uh, cryptography advantages and advantages of this technology. The use of uh, qualified electronic uh, signature granted the safety and integrity of data, but it intervenes and increases the um, cost of calibration. The second, the document with uh, electronic design signature have legal signific uh, uh, significance. The third, electronic digital signature is valid for one year. Before its expression, data is uh, replaced with a new one. Uh, it's about one month. In addition to the electronic digital signature, it is possible to use uh, the encryption procedure for the digital calibration certificate when the transferring data from the calibration laboratory to customer. And the last minus, um, in consistency of laws, when using a digital signature and the uh, log of industry certification center uh, within their standard system. Uh, now, uh, such um, certification uh, centers are situated in another uh, ministry and we uh, can, the problem, we connect with, uh, with him.
this is an information slide. Uh, it's corrected uh, for our country. It is definitive. But, uh, the, you can see the be uh, benefits of storing digital commercial certificates. And the second is a single federal information found, as in our, our case. Next slide. Uh, let's go to DCC and we look the format of uh, data exchanges uh, for DCC. We can choose one, two, three, four, five various formats and we look at their characteristics, uh, the first column there, and um, as, um, assessment of uh, properties is uh, presented in uh, pounds. Pounds. Uh, you, for example, the following uh, properties are completed. Common re uh, readability, easy uh, of editing, easy of implementation, parsing, serial leasing size, stream processing, binary security, prevalence, support of editing, support of programming languages. Uh, in reality, at this moment, the, implement, uh, the implementing software products uh, preference are uh, in JSON or XML format. The, the, this one and this one uh, has uh, better than, than another. This. Some difference between JSON and XML format. Uh, advantages and disadvantages of these uh, rating leaders. The main advantages of XML format from JSON are uh, this one uh, support many complex data type, including charts, images, and other data types. Makes information change easy and accessible for both B2B and B2C. And another one that uh, uh, supports the names, comments, and metadata. Um, all these three properties are doing the, the XML better than JSON. JSON is more uh, applicable in the exchange of data between information systems and its role has only been increased in recent years. It is uh, lightsware and faster. And now about XML. Uh, for a member of both reason, XML is used as the data exchange format for the digital calibration certificate. The structure of XML file is determined by an XML schema of the document. A schema consists of structure, elements, and attributes. You can see this. And this is a link to schema of DCC certificate. It's creating the PTB. Now, at this side, you can see the simple schema, not the CC. You can see structure, you can see elements and attributes. Um, the schema defines a description of the valid XML document format expressed in restrictions of the structure and uh, convince of the document. It is often used uh, to indicate the agreement between the system. My system will be only uh, understand the XML corresponding to the uh, certain schema. If a certain XML satisfies the requirements of the schema, it is called valid. And now you can see the example of simple XML document. You can see prolog, root element XML, inventory, inventory, um, XML declaration, comments, and uh, super elements. It's simple. Uh, 
Uh, this slide uh, shows the enlarged structure of digital certificates of calibration. The root DCC element is the digital calibration certificate element, the root element. And it includes four basic low-level elements what is the content of the DCC. The first of them, administrative data. The second, measurement results, comments, and documents. The first of them, administrative data. The um, essential native, um, the, uh, the essential native information for calibration. This is a regulated part. Uh, the measurement result, store of information of the result of the measurement. The measurement and result data must have a value and unit. Ideally, the units are C units. This is a particularly, uh, partly regulated area. Uh, the third element, all uh, future information and files agreed between the customer and the calibration level can be increased in the, this element. This is not regulated parts. All future information and files, uh, this calibration parts can be inserted in the, the element. Files and the various types of information are converted using the base 4 uh, base 60, uh, 64 method so that they can uh, store it in XML structure. Uh, and the last element uh, um, document contains the human renewable variant of DCC. For example, PDF, GP, G, GPG, and another formats. This is a human related format. One, two, three. Uh, the next slide. Uh, now uh, we see the first element of DCC, uh, DCC uh, administrative data, administrative data. The administrative data element contains the all as uh, excellent administrative information for calibration. The entries uh, this area are basically the same and regulated in all DCCs, this regulation parts. Amputated data contains information of central interest. The data fields are fixed. The information is usually on the first page of analogy calibration certificate. You can see this, the, the analog print screen for analog certificate of names. The data are used to clarity and deputy and calibration laboratory, the calibration object of the calibration customer. Uh, this is a program which can read XML files and uh, it uh, look uh, XML in this format. And this is a link to PTB site which discuss about uh, structure of DCC uh, more. And now we can look all of these elements shortly. The this not the DC software, this the core data, items, calibration laboratory, rest personal, customer, entertainment. Uh, software. This is requirement uh, required uh, position. Uh, essential information of identity of the software used to create and edit the DC of stored here. Core data, essential information for the identification of the material to be calibrated, as well as global classification of the calibration certificate. Items, uh, unique identification, description, and, and applicable conditions of the calibration object. The next one, calibration laboratory, this is a requirement, uh, required uh, parts, element. Essential information of the identification of the calibration laboratory, uh, race persons, indication of the persons responses for the reason of the report. Customer, uh, to uh, um, this uh, element is required to identification of the calibration client, statement, uh, element for the inverting various statements. It's optional element. Uh, the next part of uh, DCC, that's uh, measurement results. 
Uh, measurement results, uh, let me store it all information, all the result of the measurement. The measurement and the result data must have a value and a unit. It, it, ideally, the unit is a C unit because the difference, uh, because uh, of the different calibration requirements in the individual area, the DCs are different to each other. This part uh, was a particularly regulated area and consists uh, some elements, some, some super elements. Now you can see the, uh, these parts in real uh, DCC. Uh, now we can see this element as a more flexible or more complex. And measurement result and element result. He has such tree. You can see value, unit, label, uh, result. This area uh, cannot be uh, set as a whole. It is necessary to unit. It is necessary to unify the exchange of measuring data in view of their uh, diversity and the uh, prevailing historical practice. The complete measured result includes the following data such as identifiers, measurement results, exploitation expressions and uh, absolute of relative terms, coverage radi uh, ratio, units of measurement, blocks of text, length of uh, and time. Uh, it's a finish my presentation. As a note earlier, um, the third and fourth parts of uh, DCC are optional and not found on most digital calibration certificates. Uh, when using digital calibration certificates in Russia, I believe what the structure of the calibration certificate will be reduced to the third, to the one of the three elements. A human level version of the DCC will be created in a government information systems. What we are seeing now as the example of verification. That's all, bye bye. Sorry for my English. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Kazumoto Hosaka from yes, National yes, Metrology yes. Institute of Japan. I will take the role of a co moderator for this session. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Daniel very much for his uh, uh, very clear introduction. I'd like to thank Andrew very much for his impressive presentation about the structure and the data format for the DCC. Uh, well, uh, let's get uh, uh, started with the uh, open discussion of the topics number three. Uh, as you know, so today we have uh, invited uh, two speakers and three panelists for the live open discussion session. I think uh, that's all participants can see them on their PC screen. So why don't we go around and introduce ourselves briefly? So can you start from maybe Daniel? Yes, thank you. So uh, from my side, uh, hello to everybody. I'm Daniel Hutschenreuter from PDB and also supporting the CIPM expert group that is working on the SI digital framework. Uh, my background is also that I was involved deeply in the development of digital calibration certificates at PDB and in the scope of the European project SmartCom. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe Andrew, please. <laughs> and uh, with... Um, I'm in line now, yes? Um, uh, we work with DGT, uh, with uh, uh, PTB, and uh, in my country, I develop the PTB structure for our requirements. And uh, <laughs> I didn't talk about. Uh, 
you can talk in uh, what the all of the work in about DCC is uh, the BTB. <clears throat> Sorry. In my country, the DCC, the DCC is uh, voluntary, and uh, we can do this work. Um, in Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> You're talking about discussion about structure of DCC, and we try to do this work with PTB. Um, the head of this work is PTB, and we do it uh, with requirements uh, which we see on our country. That's all. Okay. Right, thank you. And if you uh, have some questions about my presentation, you can ask me. Okay. Now, uh, uh, okay, so maybe going to Duncan Batra. Now Batra. in our country, we are working about uh, the um, develop the Hello. I'm online. Yeah. Duncan? Yes, uh, my name's Duncan Butler. I'm from Australia uh, in the APMP uh, in a standards laboratory. We're quite a small laboratory with seven staff, and we have experimented with making DCCs, uh, and that's my experience so far. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, Irina, please. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Irina Kalazinska. I am uh, working in mass metrology about the 20 uh, years. And uh, uh, last five years, I am a connect to the Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So now uh, the session is open for discussion. So I have got uh, several questions. Uh, okay, so uh, first one, as a question to the Daniel. Uh, sorry, could you could you present, uh, please, answer proposed relationship between the DCC and the KCDP? Perhaps give an example of the, what might be possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let me try to give this uh, answer. So when we speak about digital data, we speak about sharing the data and making it available to machines. Uh, while today the human reads the, the certificate and sees, oh, I have a CIPM MRA remark on that, uh, he can go to the KCTB and uh, if he wants to validate, uh, find the the entry, the CMC entry of the laboratory. Uh, in future, with the digital certificates, a machine might want to access this information automatically and do some validation. Um, this we speak about a kind of convergence of data repositories and interlinking. So this would mean um, that in future, the digital calibration certificate is not only saying, um, I have a calibration measurement capability CMC entry at BIPM or at a regional or national database. Uh, but here is the uh, digital ID of that entry and your software, your machine can through an API access that database and find there the CMC data machine readable too. And yeah, do, do queries on that uh, validate that uh, the laboratory that gave the digital calibration certificate uh, indeed has the qualification to do the calibration with the stated uncertainties. And um, okay. from the technical point of view, um, we may want to use the same terms of quantities of uh, laboratory identification in the DCC and in the CMC databases. So this a statement on the data formats okay thank you very much 
does one, okay. does anyone have a comment or following question? Uh, Yanka, do you have any? Yes, we have yes, another please. question. Mm -hmm. There's a need for global reserve of DCC. I think in that country, I think uh, for our country, it's not required because we have the two uh, central database of meter of meter of meteorological data, and uh, to our ministry is collect it. And I don't think what we can uh, get the access to this base days to another countries. No, this is my opinion. But mm -hmm. I think the uh, global reserve of the CC is more comfortable and more needed for all countries. Mm -hmm. So, so in my opinion, the the answer to that question um, depends uh, on what. Uh, degree of harmonization you have for the DCC structure globally and uh, what you want to put in that repository. So uh, maybe in the future you have a few formats that are used by a wide range of users. Then of course it would may make sense to have a central repository or some leading organization who is hosting that scheme uh, for that that documentation. Um, so in that point of view, um, when global repository means that uh, you have some storage where you can find all the resources to develop, to use digital calibration certificates, uh, then I say, yes, it would be needed to have such a global uh, repository. But for the individual certificates, I think they are property of the customers, of the laboratories. So. Um, I don't think that they will agree to go to a global repository and store all their calibration certificates there. Yes, it's maybe the metallurgical cloud. Your your own metallurgical cloud. Okay. So we have uh, another uh, a question to Daniel. Uh, was not in plan to store the DCC on the European Meteorology Cloud? Okay, yeah, so the, the next question on that topic. Um, yeah, in the European Meteorology Cloud, this is um, a tool helping organizations uh, to exchange DCCs and all kinds of data in conformity assessment and calibration in the future, and also to store the metrology, uh, the DCC, that is true. Uh, but uh, in this case, uh, storage means that only the, the people who have the, the right to access the document, so the owners can see it. So um, there's a fine nuance there between the global repository where maybe all data can be found and the metrology cloud where only limited access is given to the documents depending on the rights that are allowed. Yes, I'm agree right. with Daniel. It's a great idea and we need to do it in the future. Does any other panelist has a comment or further question? Irina, do you have a, something or? Daniel, yeah. Daniel yeah, if not, okay. So we have uh, uh, another question here, okay. Uh, how could we participate in the CIPM expert group or the DCC activities? So, so maybe I'm also the one who could give an um, answer to that. Um, so first, uh, the DCC is at the moment not the priority topic of the CIPM expert group working on the digital SI. It's one expect. Um, but I think the general answer is if you want to participate in CIPM activities, you have to ask your the CIPM member of your country to get involved. So this is the first thing that's needed. Um, 
if you if we are speaking about this uh, presentation from Andrew Pankov on the DCC that's developed uh, within PDB, exactly. um, then you can write me an email or send an email to my colleague Siegfried Hackel, who is kind of the, the chair of this development. And you can get access, for example, to Git repositories to international working groups discussing the, the aspects of this DCC development. So two options, going to CIPM and get involved in the CIPM working groups or uh, contact me, my colleague Siegfried Hackel, um, to get access to the actual development of the project. Okay, great, great answer. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Okay, so now uh, we don't have uh, any other question, but we have uh, several time. So, I'd like to ask some point of uh, uh, security to the all panelists. I think the DCC should be the ready area so that uh, the data security would be very important to achieve the traceability to make our alternation impossible. And uh, what kind of uh, uh, security tools or idea would be applied for the DCC? as a, uh, to protect uh, these kind of things. Do you have any comments or the, your activity? Mm. You know? I have. You know? Okay, I'm talking about our country, for example. Uh, in yeah. our country, you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, in our country, uh, uh, about security is not difficult uh, situation because we have uh, two central database which controlled with uh, help of state, and uh, all the data about uh, uh, about metallurgical uh, services which control the state we can collect in these databases and uh, about the signature and the uh, digital signature it's not a question because uh, we have one uh, two alternatives uh, one of these uh, we use the digital signature and uh, the second we have the central databases and we uh, check the way for the uh, central databases uh, two ministers, the Minister of um, Trading and the Minister of Economic. We have two ministers and they have uh, two databases and we collect all the metallurgical information in this database. And I think what in future uh, we can um, use, no, don't use uh, digital uh, signature for this database, uh, for collecting the information in these databases. That's for our country. Okay, thank you. Duncan, do you have any We comment? have a centralization of storage of all metrological information. All right, thank you. Duncan, do you have any comments for the security? Uh, questions, really. Um, I too am interested in security and I wonder um, how this is accomplished <laughs> In Russia, are reports encrypted, or are they just uh, certified that they are the original reports, that they are unchanged, or is there encryption as well? Okay. Yeah. Perhaps sure. I can. That is the first question laboratories have is um, how do I make sure the report is not changed and how can we yeah. read that report? Mm -hmm. I think it's all sorted in Germany and it sounds like it's all sorted in Russia too. But every other country has to work out these questions. All right. Thank you. Irina, do you have any comments or something uh, in your case? Uh, I think uh, security is a very important question. Uh, in our country, we don't have so um, 
uh, such system for DCC, and uh, I think it uh, the um, one of my questions that uh, must be replied uh, when create uh, DCC activities. Yes. Okay. So finally, it's zero no. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you, but actually I leave the room, so I could not understand what you're talking about now. Right, okay. So now we are talking about uh, uh, security. So do you have any uh, idea of uh, security for DCC? Uh, I think, uh, of course, in a presentation of Andrew, uh, we saw the idea of the security, uh, including the digital signatures and, uh, you know, uh, encryption. And of course, uh, uh, they are very important. And if the BIPM or the meteorological community can uh, provide something about it, it may be a good help uh, to establish the DCC uh, in society, I think. OK, thank you very much. I think uh, it looks like we are running short on time. Uh, so guess, I guess we will finish here. So. Thank you all for your uh, very good input today. So this input will be summarized and uh, some of the important points will be involved in the discussion on day five, I think. So again, I'd like to thank you all of, uh, for taking the time out of your busy schedule to be here today. Thank you, goodbye. Thank you very much. Thank you.
OK. OK, uh, I am greeting you, dear colleagues, dear participants of our worldwide uh, workshop. Uh, today is the fourth day of our conference, which is devoted to the development of the digital SI in the context of pair data. <clears throat> My name is Fedor Bolijin. I am deputy director of uh, All Rus Russian Research Institute of the Meteorological Service, uh, the Russian NMI, and also I am the member of CIPM. Here I am uh, representing the regional meteorology organization COMET, the uh, organi meteorology organization of the Europe and Asia. COMET is one of the biggest regional organizations which extends from Europe till the Pacific Ocean. Now the director of COMET is Valery Gurevich, director of the National Meteorology Institute of Belarus. Uh, our conference is organized by BIPM uh, for the first time in such a worldwide format. Uh, and uh, today our um, breakthrough session is devoted to, to the very important topic, the digital calibration certificate, because uh, in the uh, practical realization of the digitalization of SI, a uh, digital calibration certificate is one of the very important stage and one of the very important driver of the implementation of the digitalization. So uh, I would like to introduce our today uh, panelists, our team, which will work with you uh, since the next, next uh, 50 minutes. It's uh, our co-moderator, Katsumoto Osaka, the scientists from NMIJ. Uh, Daniel uh, Hutschenreuter, uh, the scientists from the Physikalische und Technische Bundesanstalt, PTB Germany. Uh, Andrew Pankov, the head of the laboratory, which is responsible for the dig digitalization in the uh, Russian uh, National Metrology Institute, VNI IMS. Uh, Duncan Butler, director of the primary standards laboratory for the Australian uh, Radiation Protection Agency. Uh, Katsushira uh, Shirona, uh, the member of the National Institute of the Advanced Industrial Science and Technology of Japan. And Irina Kolodzinskaya, uh, uh, the scientists from the National uh, Metrology Institute of Ukraine, which work in the laboratory of uh, MESS. So uh, our team, uh, uh, we will have such a uh, schedule. Uh, the report of Daniel Hutschenreuter for five minutes, uh, then approximately 10 minutes, a little bit longer from report from Andrew Pankov concerning the structure of DCC. Uh, uh, and then there will be the discussion uh, where we will discuss the problems of the implementation of DCC. So uh, now let's uh, start our session. Please, uh, the report of Daniel Hutschenreuter, please. Dear participants of DSI and FAIR Digital Data Workshop, my name is Daniel Hutschenreuter. I'm a member of the expert group that is supporting CIPM at the transformation of DSI into a digital world. Today, it is my pleasure to give you a brief technical introduction to digital calibration certificates in the context of DSI and machine actionable data. Let us start with the fundamental question, what digital calibration certificate means. First, human-readable certificates in digital formats like PDF or Word are not sufficient as digital calibration certificates. DCCs denote files providing the data from calibration in machine-actionable form. The data would be given in a structured format like JSON or XML that can be understood by humans too. In many applications, digitalization comes along with an automation of processes such as in automated manufacturing and measuring. 
Here, DCCs will contribute to the underlying digital data infrastructure. Our challenge is to make the multiple knowledge from different domains and calibration understandable to machines. This example shows the situation uh, as a text that you can find in any calibration certificate today. The green marked information represents measured quantities, values, units and uncertainties based on fundamental definitions from the SI, WIM and GUM. The CIPM SI digital framework is aiming to define universal digital representation for this data. It would be the anchor for interoperability and reuse of data in all domains of the quality infrastructure that are using DSI. In addition, the blue text is contextual knowledge, such as provenance and quality information, calibration methods and procedures, instruments and calibration classes, locations and relations between all these information. It also needs to be considered for a machine actionable DCC. New kinds of measuring equipment will allow to store calibration data on the device, allowing to use this data to enhance measurement results. Thus, the IPM endorses the DCC for metrological traceability at the point of measurement. In this respect, DCCs and in general digital certificates with measurement data are interlacing with DSI. The CIPM task group and expert group on the digital SI sees the importance to develop harmonized data services and tools for a SI digital framework that meets the needs of the organizations in the international quality infrastructure. These nine potential topics are more detailed ideas about an interconnection of DCCs with DSI in fair digital data. Number one considers DCCs building upon common data formats for quantities, values, SI units and uncertainties. Number two is about DCCs obtaining information on the qualification through a digital link with a fair database of calibration measurement capability entries. Number three considers structured knowledge on calibration in the form of taxonomies controlled vocabularies and ontologies. Number four is about services supporting the usage of data in DCCs and users of DCCs, for example, through software tools that help to read data or QR codes on instruments that help to access the data of calibration. Number five considers the impact from and requirements for reference fair metadata in a DCC. Number six considers to assemble a metrological traceability chain from a DCC back to this I definition and fundamental constants. Number seven is about changes of instruments and instrument software motivated by DCCs, also considering digital twins of measuring instruments. Number eight considers the infrastructure that is needed to support the integrity of digital data, like electronic signatures and persistent storage. And finally, number nine is about relevant work ongoing in international, regional and national organizations, considering potential joint aims. Thank you for listening. And I hope that this introduction gave you a basic understanding of DCCs. Now I wish all of you an inspiring discussion in this breakout session, looking forward to your valuable thoughts and ideas. With this, I like to end. Thank you very much. Dear ladies and gentlemen, this presentation will tell you about the specifics uh, of calibration in Russia, uh, processes related to the digitization of metallurgical services in our country, uh, how a service such calibration will be carried out in the digital future, about the digital calibration certificate and the requirements for this structure. Dear colleagues, uh, the title of my presentation, requirements for the structure and the format of digital uh, certificate of calibrations, the short is DCC. My name is Andrei Pankov, and I will tell you of this presentation. 
uh, the presentation will uh, will explain the basics of the DCC um, principles. Separately, I would like to express my good date to colleagues from PTB Germany who were point, uh, who were pioneered in this area and create the basis for the implementation of DCC in other countries. Uh, in this slide, you can see the uh, features of calibration of measurement instruments in our country, in my country. Uh, only three characteristics. The first of one is uh, voluntary lens, the second, traceability, and the third, uh, recognition of calibration results during verification. Um, uh, you may ask uh, why there are so few um, requirements. This is due to the fact that the calibration in Russia is not mandatory. Only verification of measurement instruments in the field of state of regulation is mandatory. And the second slide shows... Um, in, in the second slide shows the quantity statistic or which characterizes the system of measurement uh, uniformity, uniformity in Russia. Uh, and one of the lines, this one, this is the annual number of verifications and calibrations in Russia. It's about uh, 100 million. According to the official, official data of, of GIS Arshin information system, more than 13 uh, million verifications are carried out in the Russia anomaly. Uh, uh, it is uh, clear what the number of calibration is much higher. Uh, the information on the number of calibrations in, is uh, approximately. Since the procedure is voluntary, there are no official statistics on it and we can estimate is indirectly. Due to the fact the calibration is voluntary, there are different systems and associations in which we can be carried out. Uh, the first of them is the national accreditation system. The second, uh, the Russian, this is state system. Uh, the second, the Russian calibration system, uh, which is situated in VNIMS. And uh, the last of them is the CIPM MRA. Uh, the framework through the which national intelligence institutes demonstrate the international um, equivalence of their measurement standards and the calibration and measurement certificates they serve. Uh, who uh, regulates the calibration uh, of measurement instruments in Russia? There are two ministers. The Minister of Economic and Development uh, plus uh, Federal Service of Accreditation of Russian Federation. And the second ministry is the Ministry of Industry and Trade of the Russian Federation and the uh, Rostandard. Which of them have their own information on systems, information systems and databases? Database of Russian accreditation and uh, the Federal Federation Fund of Assurance of Infirmity of Measurement named Arshin. And uh, calibration uh, the data of uh, calibration uh, may storage in all these systems, and first and the second. And in, in future, it is possible to collect information of uh, calibration only in one of these systems. Maybe it will be a um, meteorological cloud. cloud. This slide is reference. Uh, the use of digital calibration certificates is fully cons uh, consistent with the digital economic development strategy declared by our leader, our President Putin. At uh, right side, you can see the um, decree of presidents, uh, order of government, uh, and, another, uh, and, and another document, uh, which um, according with digital economy. And the right side, you can see the uh, documents with uh, digital uh, about digital metrology. This federal law 102, and the order of the government of the Russian Federation um, 
uh, an approval of the strategy for insurance in the uniformity of measurement in Russia Federation until 2025. All these uh, documents provide the digitalization in our country and the DCC, it's cool. <laughs> uh, next. Now we go to the DCC and about DCC. The next slide. Consider the benefits of using the, uh, uh, consider the benefits of using DCC. Uh, some of these advantages are connected to any digital documents, not only for DCC. The first one is storage, authentication, protection, uniformity, availability. Uh, no, for example, storage provides easy storage, software loading, and digital processing of results. Uh, Authorization. Uh, the digital signature of certificate of, uh, of certification authority gives legal uh, signification to document. Protection. A group of this um, safeguard, guaranteed integrity and reliability. Uniformity. Uniform form and uniformity of interpretation of qualification results. Uh, availability. Uh, it is possible to gain access to the document from anywhere using the digital uh, means of communication. In addition, this is the implementation technology is public, uh, publi uh, publi publicly and available. Uh, there you can see the regional and international standards and documents. Um, which have requirements for the implementation of DCC. Basically, basic international documents are presented here, uh, but uh, we must also take into according original uh, Russian requirements. Uh, the international documents, um, the international system of units, first of one, uh, international vocabulary of metrology, WIM, a guide for expression of uncertainty in measurement, JUM, GUM. <laughs> reference book of found, uh, fundamental physical constant so data and uh, standard um, ISOEC uh, 17.025 general requirements for, uh, for, um, for competence of testing and collaboration laboratories and about uh, region standards of our country of Russia is federal law 102 uh, that's an order of Ministry of Economic and Development, 70 SEM, it means accreditation, procedure of accreditation, and approval of accreditation criteria. The three documents. You can see this slide, all of them. This original, this um, international standards. Uh, now, some words about digital signature and uh, cryptography advantages and advantages of this technology. The use of uh, qualified electronic uh, signature granted the safety and integrity of data, but it intervenes and increases the um, cost of calibration. The second, the document with uh, electronic design signature have legal signific uh, signification, uh, significance. The third, electronic digital signature is valid for one year before its expression data is uh, replaced with a new one. Uh, it's about one month. In addition to the electronic digital signature, it is possible to use uh, the encryption procedure for the digital calibration certificate when the transferring data from the calibration laboratory to customer. And the last minus, um, in consistency of laws when using a digital signature and the uh, log of industry certification center uh, within their standard system. Uh, now, uh, such um, certification uh, centers are situated in another uh, ministry and we uh, can, the problem we connect with, uh, with him. This is an information slide. Uh, it's corrected uh, for our country. It is definitive. Uh, the, you can see the be uh, benefits of storing digital commercial certificates 
and the second is the single federal information found as in our case. Next slide. Uh, let's go to DCC and we look the format of uh, data exchanges uh, for DCC. We can choose one, two, three, four, five various formats and we look is their characteristics, uh, the first column there, and um, as, um, assessment of uh, properties is uh, presented in uh, pounds. pounds. Uh, you, for example, the following uh, properties are complained. Common re uh, readably, easy uh, of editing, easy of implementation, parsing, serial listening size, stream processing, binary security, prevalence, support of editing, support of programming languages. Uh, in reality, at this moment, the, implement, uh, the implementing software products uh, preference are uh, in JSON or XML format. The, the, this one and this one uh, has uh, better than, than another one. This. Some difference between JSON and XML format. Uh, advantages and disadvantages of these uh, rating leaders. The main advantages of XML format from JSON are uh, this one uh, support many complex data type, including charts, images, and other data types. Makes information change easy and accessible for both B2B and B2C. And another one that uh, uh, supports the names, comments, and metadata. Um, all these three properties are. Um, doing the, the XML better than JSON. JSON is more uh, applicable in the exchange of data between information systems and its role has only been increased in recent years. It is uh, light, swear and faster. And now about XML. Uh, for a member of a both reason, XML is used as the data exchange format for the digital calibration certificate. The structure of XML file is determined but is an XML schema of the document. A schema consists of structure, elements and attributes. You can see this. And this is the link to schema of DCC certificate. It's creating the PTB. Now, at this side, you can see the simple schema, not the CC. You can see structure, you can see elements and attributes. Um, the schema defines a description of the valid XML document format expressed in restrictions of the structure and uh, convince of the document. It is often used uh, to indicate the agreement between the system. My system will be only uh, understand the XML corresponding to the uh, certain schema. If a certain XML satisfies the requirements of the schema, it is called valid. And now you can see the example of simple XML document. You can see prolog, root element XML, inventory, inventory, um, XML declaration, comments, and uh, super elements. It's simple. Uh, uh, the slide uh, shows the enlarged structure of digital certificate of calibration. The root DCC element is the digital calibration certificate element, the root element. 
and it includes four basic low-level elements what characterizes the content of the DCC. The first of them, administrative data, the second, measurement results, comments and documents. The first of them, administrative data, the um, essential native, uh, inform uh, the, uh, the essential native information for calibration. This is a regulated path. Uh, the measurement result stores all information of the result of the measurement. The measurement and the result data must have a value and unit. Ideally, the units are C units. This is a particularly, uh, partly regulated area. Uh, the third element, all uh, future information and files agreed between the customer and the calibration level can be increased in the, this element. This is not regulated parts. All future information and files, uh, description parts can be inserted in the, the element. Files and the various types of information are converted using the base 4 uh, base 64 uh, methods so that they can store it in XML structure. Uh, and the last element uh, um, document contains the human renewable variant of DCC. For example, PDF, GP, G, GPG, and another formats. This is a human related format. One, two, three. Uh, the next slide. Uh, now uh, we see the first element of DCC, uh, DCC uh, administrative data, administrative data. This administrative data element contains the all as a silent administrative information for calibration. The entries uh, this area are basically the same and regulated in all DCCs, this regulation parts. The data contains the information of central interest. The data fields are fixed. The information is usually on the first page of analogy calibration certificate. You can see this, the, energy, the analog print screen for analog certificate of names. The data are used to clear and deputy and calibration laboratory, the calibration object of the calibration customer. Uh, this is a program which can read XML files and uh, it uh, look uh, XML in this format. And this is a link to PTB site which discuss about uh, structure of DCC uh, more. And now we can look all of these elements shortly. This is not this is software, this is the core data, items, calibration laboratory, rest personal, customer, entertainments. Uh, software. This is requirement, uh, required uh, position. Uh, essential information of identity of the software used to create and edit the DC of stored here. Core data, essential information for the identification of the material to be calibrated, as well as global classification of the calibration certificate. Items, uh, unique identification, description, and, the, and the applicable conditions of the calibration object. The next one, calibration laboratory, this requirement, requirement uh, required uh, parts element. Essential information of the identification of the calibration laboratory. Uh, race persons, indication of the persons responses for the reason of the report. Customer, uh, to, uh, um, this uh, element is required to identification of the calibration client. Statement, uh, element for the inverting various statements. It's optional element. Uh, the next part of uh, DCC, that's uh, measurement results. Uh, measurement results uh, element stored all information on the result of the measurement. The measurement and the result data must have a value and a unit. It, it, ideally, 
the unit is a C unit because the difference uh, because uh, of the different calibration requirements in the individual area, the DCs are different to each other. This path uh, were, was a particularly regulated area and consists uh, some elements, some, some super elements. Now you can see the, uh, these parts in real uh, DCC. Uh, now we can see this element as the more flexible or more complex. And measurement result and element result. He has such tree. You can see value, unit, label, uh, result. This area uh, cannot be uh, set it as a whole. It is necessary to unit. It is necessary to unify the exchange of measurement data in view of their uh, diversity and the uh, prevailing historical practice. The complete measured result includes the following data, such as identifiers. Measurement results, expectation, expressions, and uh, absolute of relative terms, coverage radi uh, ratio, units of measurement, blocks of text, length of uh, and time. Uh, it's a finish my presentation. As a note earlier, um, the third and fourth paths of uh, DCC are optional and not found on most digital calibration certificates. Uh, when using digital calibration certificates in Russia, I believe what the structure of the calibration certificate will be reduced to the third, to the one of the three elements. A human level version of the DCC will be created in a government information systems. What we are seeing now as the example of verification. That's all. Bye bye. Sorry for my English. <laughs>
Um, and of course, uh, if you work on a more technical level uh, skills to work with XML with JSON and data formats, and skills also to uh, exchange data through the internet, through APIs, for example. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, yes, we okay. can hear you, Katsumoto. So you can continue uh, with I'm our sorry. questions. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. So we have a slight bit technical problem. Hello, everyone. I'm Kazumoto Hosaka from NMRJ. I will take the role of the co moderator for this session. First of all, I'd like to thank Daniel very much uh, uh, for his uh, very clear introduction. And uh, I'd like to thank Andrew very much for his uh, impressive presentation and uh, structure and uh, data format for the DCC. Well, let's uh, get started with the uh, open discussion for the topic three DCC. Uh, as you know, today we have invited two speakers and uh, also three panelists for the live session. I think uh, that all panelists uh, can see uh, them on the uh, PC screen. So why don't we go around and introduce ourselves briefly? So can you start with uh, Daniel, please? So thank you. I'll be very brief. So my name is Daniel Hutchenreuter from PTB and from the CIPM expert group that was mentioned several times. So I come from the development of DCCs in Europe. Yeah, and also uh, like to thank everybody here in this panel for being here and also special thanks to Andrew for this excellent presentation and introduction to the DCCs. Okay, thank you. Andrew, please. You mark it off, Andrew. <laughs> okay. Uh, my name is Andrei Pankov. I'm the head of laboratory of testing software of Russian Institute. And I have some uh, work uh, with the cooperation with PTB about the DCC. And now you look at my presentation about it. Okay. Uh, thank you. So, so next to be to Duncan, please. Hello everyone, my name is Duncan Butler. I'm from Australia where I manage a dosimetry laboratory. It's quite small with about seven people and we have implemented, well, we have written some DCCs, so I understand a little bit about this, but not very much and I'm asking many questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Hatsuhiro, please. Uh, I'm Katahiro Shirano from National Meteorology Institute of Japan uh, Data Science Research Group. Uh, my background is statistics uh, in uh, measurement science. Thank you. All right, thank you. And uh, finally, so Irina, please. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Irina Kalzinska. I am uh, working in National uh, Institute of Meteorology, uh, Ukraine. I am working. Uh, in mass metrology about 20 years and last five years uh, i am a climate engineer. okay all right thank you very much uh we have already some of the questions here and uh, probably the first one uh it be the mohammed from the mohammed uh, to the daniel was not it uh, planned to, to store DCCs on the European Meteorology Cloud? So, Daniel, can can you say some comment for this question? Yeah, I, I'm happy to answer yeah. that. So, um, the Metrology Cloud um, at the moment is for um, having a digital communication, so today's communication between uh, accreditation bodies, laboratories, customers um, is mapped to digital world and in that of course um, DCCs would be possible to be exchanged through the metrology cloud network in future and also some storage would be possible of course. Okay, so Andrew do you have any comments or something on that 
Any comments? Uh, at the time, uh, our, okay. at, at, not, at this time, uh, our country is not connecting to the Europe Metrological Cloud, and but in future it will be a great idea to collect all data in the same place, in one place. It's a really cool idea. Because in our country we have some uh, digital program, the program of digitization of meteorological services in our country until uh, 2025 year, and it will be a great idea to collect our data in one digital cloud. Okay, thank you. It's great. And uh, another... Can I say something? Yeah. Please. Uh, actually, I, in my understanding, the European Meteorology Club is basically the idea involving the legal meteorology. But I think the DPT is basically independent of uh, legal meteorology. So, Daniel, do you have any idea about the repository independent from the legal meteorology thing? So the metrology cloud started with uh, use cases in legal metrology, but of course it's, it's not limited to legal metrology. Okay. Uh, so in future you can expect also use cases outside of legal metrology uh -huh. to be handled with the metrology cloud. Okay, thank you very much. Does anyone have any comments for, for cloud? Okay. Right. Okay, so maybe we have uh, another question. Uh, okay, so the question is, the DCC scheme is well established. Uh, how often is it being updated? Does the CIPM export group think it is ready? Uh, sorry, so Daniel, do you have uh, any comments? Uh, so thank you for for this nice comment. Um, it would be also nice question. <laughs> to be, um, from the people in this round who know the DCC scheme, what they think of it. Um, it's it's regularly updated. Like this is uh, worked on in the Git repository. Um, if you join there, you can add comments. You join discussion of the development. So now in the next month, we expect a version 2.5 of that scheme. Um, so it's it's alive. <laughs> Short. Um, then the second part of the question: um, Does the CIPM expert group think it is ready? So uh, at the moment, this uh, DCC, as it is a kind of regional national development, has not been discussed on the level of the CIPM expert group. So it it would. Uh, so I cannot really give an answer to that. Uh, in this respect, I also like to acknowledge uh, the many developments we have on calibration and accreditation data in the world. So um, yesterday we heard the presentation of Mike Custer and Mike Schwartz from NCFLI. They are also doing a great work, I think, in establishing taxonomies and data structures for accreditation. So um, when we speak about uh, DCCs on the CIPM level, I think this will need some time to uh, bring these developments all together. Okay, thank you. I think uh, so Irina and also Duncan has a, a service of the uh, sort of DCC or starting uh, thinking about uh, starting the, this, this kind of DCC. So do you have any comment for this kind of uh, so, uh, update or something? for the uh, reliable DCC. Uh, perhaps I'll go first, thank you. Yes, we, I think the PTB reached out to many different laboratories to make sure that the schema works with different measurement quantities. And certainly in radiation measurement, I thought the schema was very suitable. I can't think of anything that it cannot do. But that doesn't mean it's ready. There are many different areas of measurement and certainly areas with very complex data structure. But in radiation measurement, it's ready to go. Okay. Thank you. 
So, Irina, do you have uh, any experience or thought? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have uh, a big experience in DCC, uh, but I think in uh, this area, the safety is the main question, yes. Uh, safety information, uh, it's very important uh, uh, issue for customers of DCC, I think so. Okay, thank you. Okay, so... We have uh, another question. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, from the Brian Justice uh, to Daniel. For new NMIs, what skill sets do we need to hire to implement the DCC? Um. Kazu, I think we have answered this question uh, before you joined in the discussion. So uh, this is already All right. yes. <laughs> oh, but actually, I have one additional question. Okay. Um, yes. Yes, we've already talked about the you know skill set, and Daniel said the most important thing is the curiosity. <laughs> okay, I understand it. But if we have a curiosity, how long will it take? to you know, acquire the whole skill to run the, to establish the DCC, do you think, uh, Daniel and Andrew? So Andrew, do you like to first answer to that question? Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I don't understand. Could you repeat again? I'm not sure if Andrew heard us. So I, I'll just go on and answer. Um, so uh, how, how long it takes to uh, acquire yeah. the skills? So it depends how actively you work on that. Uh, one example from PDB now. Um, in the past three years, we, we started to introduce GitLab. So GitLab as a repository for version storing of source code data and everything uh, and we had not only the the tech expert work on that uh, but also uh, leading people uh, at pdb getting used to that um, and you can say it was a good time of two to three years to get more and more people on that but you need to invest in trainings and everything um, so okay. I, I expect a similar thing for uh, DCCs and all digital technology, if you want to have many people work on that, you need to spend time to give them training uh, and have them really work on that and use the tools. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so at the moment, we don't have new uh, questions uh, from the audience. Uh, okay, so during the, this session, so I'm asking uh, all panelists and speakers, do you have any additional comments or something uh, important point you'd like to input? Uh, perhaps if I could uh, add to the question about how long it takes to implement. Um, I, th I think to implement a fully digital calibration laboratory, mm -hmm is as daniel says several years of work. Okay. But to write a dcc that's in the right format um, you can do that pretty easily uh, it's it's all of the it, it's doing it properly that is difficult but if you have an excel spreadsheet that can write a pdf that you would normally print and send to the customer Mm -hmm. then it's pretty easy to get that to write a DCC okay. that will satisfy the schema. So mm -hmm. maybe you can start playing with DCCs now. And so maybe we can say that if we have the software uh, like Excel uh, to combat the normal digital data to DCC format, uh, maybe we do not need uh, any special skill set. Uh, is that correct? I think just writing out the the XML file, which is a text mm -hmm. file, is is not particularly difficult. It's mm -hmm. the 
API, the application interface to talk okay. to a database and an instrument, that is difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. And you need that to make the data robust. Okay, thank you. Do any other comments? Mm -hmm. So I, I like to comment on uh, what Duncan Butler said. So Excel is used to, as a tool used, uh, I think, in many NMIs and laboratories. Also think of smaller laboratories. So I'm convinced that uh, working with Excel and DCCs um, will be a key aspect to use DCCs in future, just because Excel is so used so far uh, in so many domains. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, it looks like uh, time uh, is uh, short. And uh, I, I think uh, it's a good idea to get back to the Theodore. Theodore, please. Yes, uh, dear colleagues, uh, I would like to uh, tell you uh, uh, thank you very much for the discussion. Uh, dear participants, uh, um, dear colleagues which uh, uh, who are hear me, uh, thank you very much that you uh, were with us all the time. Uh, don't forget uh, that there will be the second session with the same topic. Uh, it will begin at 1 p.m. UTC. And uh, now I want to um, wish you uh, good health and uh, I think we will continue to work on this very interesting topic the digitalization of SI and it's uh, the core and I think it will be the first step the first stage the implementation of DCC so uh, goodbye to everybody and uh, we will meet in our maybe meetings of our expert groups, uh, task groups, and so on. So uh, our session is finished. That's all. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you Bye -bye. very much for moderating. Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks to the Thank speakers. You very much.